Advent is a season observed in many Christian churches as a time of expectant waiting and preparation for the celebration of the Nativity of Jesus at Christmas as well as the return of Jesus at the Second Coming. The term is a version of the Latin word meaning, coming. The term, Advent is also used in Eastern Orthodoxy for the 40 day Nativity fast, which has practices different from those in the West. Latin Adventus is the translation of the Greek word parousia, commonly used to refer to the second coming of Christ. For Christians, the season of Advent anticipates the coming of Christ from three different perspectives. Since the time of Bernard of Clairvaux, D. Christians have spoken of the three comings of Christ, in the flesh in Bethlehem, in our hearts daily, and in glory at the end of time. The season offers the opportunity to share in the ancient longing for the coming of the Messiah, and to be alert for his second coming. Advent is the beginning of the Western liturgical year and commences on the fourth Sunday before Christmas sometimes known as Advent Sunday, the Sunday nearest to St. Andrew's Day the 30th of November, in the Roman Rite of the Catholic Church, the Western Rite of the Orthodox Church, and in the Anglican, Lutheran, Moravian, Presbyterian, and Methodist calendars. In the Ambrosian Rite and the Mozarabic Rite of the Catholic Church, Advent begins on the sixth Sunday before Christmas, the Sunday after St. Martin's Day the 11th of November. Practices associated with Advent include keeping an Advent calendar, lighting an Advent wreath, praying an Advent daily devotional, erecting a chrismon tree, lighting a Christingle, as well as other ways of preparing for Christmas, such as setting up Christmas decorations, a custom that is sometimes done liturgically through a hanging of the green ceremony. The equivalent of Advent in Eastern Christianity is called the Nativity Fast, but it differs in length and observances, and does not begin the liturgical church year as it does in the West. The Eastern Nativity Fast does not use the equivalent parousia in its preparatory services. History It is unknown when the period of preparation for Christmas that is now called Advent first began, it was certainly in existence from about 480 and the novelty introduced by the Council of Tours of 567 was to order monks to fast every day in the month of December until Christmas. Some have even said it goes back to the time of the Twelve Apostles or that it was founded by St. Peter. This has led to the conclusion that it is impossible to claim with confidence a credible explanation of the origin of Advent. Associated with Advent was a period of fasting, known also as the Nativity Fast or the Fast of December. According to some sources, the celebration of Advent began in the 5th century when the Bishop Perpetuus directed that starting with the Feast of St. Martin, the 11th of November, until Christmas, one fasts three times per week. This is why Advent is also named Lent of St. Martin. According to historians, this practice remained limited to the Diocese of Tours until the 6th century, but the Macon Council held in 581 adopted the practice in Tours and soon all France observed three days of fasting a week from the Feast of St. Martin until Christmas. The most devout worshippers in some countries exceeded the requirements adopted by the Council of Macon, and fasted every day of Advent. The homilies of Gregory the Great in the late 6th century showed four weeks to the liturgical season of Advent, but without the observance of a fast. However, under Charlemagne in the 9th century, writings claim that the fast was still widely observed. In the 13th century, the fast of Advent was not commonly practiced although, according to Durand of Mend, fasting was still generally observed. As quoted in the Bull of Canonization of St. Louis, the zeal with which he observed this fast was no longer a custom observed by Christians of great piety. It was then limited to the period from St. Andrew until Christmas Day, since the solemnity of this apostle was more universal than that of St. Martin. When Pope Urban V ascended the papal seat in 1362, he simply forced people in his court to abstinence but there was no question of fasting. It was then customary in Rome to observe five weeks of Advent before Christmas. This is particularly discussed in the Sacramentary of St. Gregory. Ambrosiana or Milan liturgies have six. The Greeks show no more real consistency. Advent was an optional fasting that some begin on 15 November, while others begin on 6 December or only a few days before Christmas. The Catholic Church, for centuries, has begun the season of Advent on the fourth Sunday before Christmas and neither fast nor abstinence are observed. No canonical penalty has ever been attached to the neglect of the practices of Advent. The Church has at times declined to administer the sacrament of matrimony during Advent, because of the joy connected with the celebration. 
The Liturgy of Advent remained unchanged until the Second Vatican Council, in 1963, introduced minor changes, differentiating the spirit of Lent from that of Advent, emphasizing Advent as a season of hope for Christ's coming now as a promise of his second coming. Traditions The theme of readings and teachings during Advent is often the preparation for the Second Coming, while also commemorating the First Coming of Christ at Christmas. The first clear references in the Western Church to Advent occur in the Gelasian Sacramentary, which provides Advent collects, epistles, and gospels for the five Sundays preceding Christmas and for the corresponding Wednesdays and Fridays. While the Sunday readings relate to the first coming of Jesus Christ as Savior as well as to his second coming as Judge, traditions vary in the relative importance of penitence and expectation during the weeks in Advent. <laughs> <laughs> Liturgical colors Since approximately the 13th century, the usual liturgical color in Western Christianity for Advent has been violet. Pope Innocent III declared black to be the proper color for Advent, though Gerandus of St. Porcain claims violet has preference over black. The violet or purple color is often used for hangings around the church, the vestments of the clergy, and often also the tabernacle. In some Christian denominations, blue, a color representing hope, is an alternative liturgical color for Advent, a custom traced to the usage of the Church of Sweden Lutheran and the medieval Sarum Rite in England. In addition, the color blue is also used in the Mozarabic Rite Catholic and Anglican, which dates from the 8th century. This color is often referred to as Sarum Blue. The Lutheran Book of Worship lists blue as the preferred color for Advent while the Methodist Book of Worship and the Presbyterian Book of Common Worship identify purple or blue as appropriate for Advent. There has been an increasing trend in Protestant churches to supplant purple with blue during Advent as it is a hopeful season of preparation that anticipates both Bethlehem and the consummation of history in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Proponents of this new liturgical trend argue that purple is traditionally associated with solemnity and somberness, which is fitting to the repentant character of Lent. The Roman Catholic Church retains the traditional violet. Blue is not generally used in Latin Catholicism, and where it does regionally, it has nothing to do with Advent specifically, but with veneration of the Blessed Virgin. However, on some occasions that are heavily associated with Advent, such as the Rorate Mass, but not on Sundays, white is used, on the third Sunday of Advent, formerly referred to as Gaudete Sunday before the change to Third Sunday of Advent. When the calendar was revised in the 1960s, rose or pink may be used instead, referencing the rose used on Laetare Sunday, an earlier name for the fourth Sunday of Lent. A rose-colored candle in Western Christianity is referenced as a sign of joy Gaudete, lit on the third Sunday of Advent. But violet is the preferred color for all four Sundays of Advent according to the current Roman Catholic rubrics. Violet is also the preferred color for the Sundays of Lent. During the Nativity fast, red is used by Eastern Christianity, although gold is an alternative color. Topic. Music Many churches also hold special musical events, such as Nine Lessons and Carols and singing of Handel's Messiah Oratorio. Also, the Advent Prose, an antiphonal plainsong, may be sung. The Late Advent Weekdays 17 to 24 December mark the singing of the great advent o antiphons these are the daily antiphons for the magnificat at vespers or evening prayer in the roman catholic and lutheran churches and even song in anglican churches and mark the forthcoming birth of the messiah they form the basis for each verse of the popular advent hymn o come o come emmanuel german songs for advent include skommt ein schiff geladen from the 15th century and O Heiland, Ray die Himmel auf, published in 1622. Johann Sebastian Bach composed several cantatas for Advent in Weimar, from Nun Kam, Der Heiden Heiland, BWV 61, to Hers und Mund und Tat und Leben, BWV 147a, but only one more in Leipzig where he worked for the longest time, because their Advent was a silent time which allowed cantata music only on the first of the four Sundays. During Advent, the Gloria of the Mass is omitted, so that the return of the angel's song at Christmas has an effect of novelty. 
Mass compositions written especially for Lent, such as Michael Haydn's Missa Tempore Quadragesimae, in D minor for choir and organ, have no gloria and so are appropriate for use in Advent. Topic. Fasting Bishop Perpetuus of Tours, who died in 490, ordered fasting three days a week from the day after St. Martin's Day the 11th of November. In the 6th century, local councils enjoined fasting on all days except Saturdays and Sundays from St. Martin's Day to Epiphany the Feast of Baptism, a period of 56 days, but of 40 days fasting, like the Fast of Lent. It was therefore called Quadragesima Sancti Martini St. Martin's Lent. This period of fasting was later shortened and called Advent by the Church. In the Anglican and Lutheran churches this fasting rule was later relaxed. The Roman Catholic Church later abolished the precept of fasting at an unknown date at the latest in 1917, later, but kept Advent as a season of penitence. In addition to fasting, dancing and similar festivities were forbidden in these traditions. On Rose Sunday, relaxation of the fast was permitted. Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox churches still hold the tradition of fasting for 40 days before Christmas. <laughs> Local rituals In England, especially in the northern counties, there was a custom now extinct for poor women to carry around the Advent images, two dolls dressed to represent Jesus and the Blessed Virgin Mary. A halfpenny coin was expected from every one to whom these were exhibited and bad luck was thought to menace the household not visited by the doll bearers before Christmas Eve at the latest. In Normandy, farmers employed children under 12 to run through the fields and orchards armed with torches, setting fire to bundles of straw, and thus it was believed driving out such vermin as were likely to damage the crops. In Italy, among other Advent celebrations is the entry into Rome in the last days of Advent of the Calabrian Pifferari, or bagpipe players, who play before the shrines of Mary, the mother of Jesus. In Italian tradition, the shepherds played these pipes when they came to the manger at Bethlehem to pay homage to the infant Jesus. In recent times, the most common observance of Advent outside church circles has been the keeping of an Advent calendar or Advent candle, with one door being opened in the calendar, or one section of the candle being burned, on each day in December leading up to Christmas Eve. In many countries, the first day of Advent often heralds the start of the Christmas season, with many people opting to erect their Christmas trees and Christmas decorations on or immediately before Advent Sunday. Since 2011, an Advent labyrinth consisting of 2,500 tea lights has been formed for the third Saturday of Advent in Frankfurt Bornheim. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Advent wreath. The concept of the Advent wreath originated among German Lutherans in the 16th century. However, it was not until three centuries later that the modern Advent wreath took shape. The modern Advent wreath, with its candles representing the Sundays of Advent, originated from an 1839 initiative by Johann Heinrich Wickern, a Protestant pastor in Germany and a pioneer in urban mission work among the poor. In view of the impatience of the children he taught as they awaited Christmas, he made a ring of wood, with nineteen small red tapers and four large white candles. Every morning a small candle was lit, and every Sunday a large candle. Custom has retained only the large candles, the wreath crown is traditionally made of fir tree branches knotted with a red ribbon and decorated with pine cones, holly, laurel, and sometimes mistletoe. It is also an ancient symbol signifying several things, first of all, the crown symbolizes victory, in addition to its round form evoking the sun and its return each year. The number four represents, in addition to the four weeks of Advent, the four seasons and the four cardinal virtues, and the green color is a sign of life and hope. The fir tree is a symbol of strength and laurel a symbol of victory over sin and suffering. The latter two, with the holly, do not lose their leaves, and thus represent the eternity of God. The flames of candles are the representation of the Christmas light approaching and bringing hope and peace, as well as the symbol of the struggle against darkness. For Christians, this crown is also the symbol of Christ the King, the holly recalling the crown of thorns resting on the head of Christ. The keeping of an Advent wreath is a common practice in homes or churches. The Advent wreath is traditionally placed on a table with four candles or, without candles, on the front door of the house as a welcome sign. The Advent wreath is adorned with candles, usually three violet or purple and one pink, the pink candle being lit on the third Sunday of Advent, called Gaudete Sunday after the opening word, Gaudete, meaning, rejoice, 
of the entrance antiphon at Mass. Some add a fifth candle white, known as the Christ candle, in the middle of the wreath, to be lit on Christmas Eve or day. The candles added to the wreath crown symbolize, in one interpretation, the great stages of salvation before the coming of the Messiah, the first is the symbol of the forgiveness granted to Adam and Eve, the second is the symbol of the faith of Abraham and of the patriarchs who believe in the gift of the promised land, the third is the symbol of the joy of David whose lineage does not stop and also testifies to his covenant with God, and the fourth and last candle is the symbol of the teaching of the prophets who announce a reign of justice and peace or they symbolize the four stages of human history, creation, the incarnation, the redemption of sins, and the last judgment. In Orthodox churches there are sometimes wreaths with six candles, in line with the six-week duration of the Nativity Fast, Advent. In Sweden, white candles, symbol of festivity and purity, are used in celebrating St. Lucis Day, 13 December, which always falls within Advent. Four Sundays. In the Roman Rite of the Catholic Church, the readings of Mass on the Sundays of Advent have distinct themes. On the first Sunday, Advent Sunday, they look forward to the second coming of Christ. On the second Sunday, the Gospel reading recalls the preaching of John the Baptist, who came to prepare the way of the Lord. The other readings have associated themes. On the third Sunday, Gaudete Sunday, the Gospel reading is again about John the Baptist, the other readings about the joy associated with the coming of the Savior. On the fourth Sunday, the Gospel reading is about the events involving Mary and Joseph that led directly to the birth of Jesus, while the other readings are related to these. In another tradition, the readings for the first Sunday in Advent relate to the Old Testament patriarchs who were Christ's ancestors, so some call the first Advent candle that of hope. The readings for the second Sunday concern Christ's birth in a manger and other prophecies, so the candle may be called that of Bethlehem, the Way, or of the Prophets. The third Sunday, Gaudete Sunday after the first word of the introit Philippians chapter 4 verse 4, is celebrated with rose-colored vestments similar to Laetare Sunday at the middle point of Lent. The readings relate to John the Baptist, and the rose candle may be called that of joy or of the shepherds. In the Episcopal Church USA, the collect stir up. The first words of the collect may be read during this week, although before the 1979 revision of the Book of Common Prayer it was sometimes read in the first Sunday of Advent. Even earlier, stir up Sunday was once jocularly associated with the stirring of the Christmas mincement, begun before Advent. The phrase stir up occurs at the start of the collect for the last Sunday before Advent in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. The readings for the fourth Sunday relate to the Annunciation of Christ's birth, so the candle may be known as the Angel's Candle. The Magnificat or Song of Mary may be featured. Where an Advent wreath includes a fifth candle, it is known as the Christ Candle and is lit during the Christmas Eve service. Other variants of the themes celebrated on each of the four Sundays include the prophet's candle, symbolizing hope, the Bethlehem candle, symbolizing faith, the shepherd's candle, symbolizing joy, the angel's candle, symbolizing peace, hope, peace, joy, love, faithfulness, hope, joy, love, prophets, angels, shepherds, magi, faith, prepare, joy, love. Topic. See also. Dormition fast. Fasting and abstinence in the Roman Catholic Church Great Lent Mortification of the flesh in Christianity Nativity fast Regation days Notes External links Daily Advent Devotional LHM. The Season of Advent Christian Resource Institute Advent Sermon Series from the Society of St. John the Evangelist, a monastic community in the Episcopal Church Catholic Encyclopedia, Advent American Catholic, Advent to Epiphany Prayers, Calendar and Activities Liturgical Resources for Advent Advent FAQ at the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod website Advent Online Devotional Site Online resources for the season of Advent at the text this week Topic. Further reading 
Book of Common Prayer, 1979 according to the usage of the Episcopal Church. <laughs>